you know, I get asked, what's it like traveling and shooting? Because it can seem pretty daunting. So uh, I'm out here in Tennessee for uh, the V squared finale match. And I thought, you know, it might be a good opportunity to show you guys what it's like to fly with guns and, uh, you know, what we've got now, admittedly, I've only flown a couple times. Most of the matches I go to, uh, I drive even like, um, nationals and stuff like that, that are down in Phoenix. Uh, I've flown out to Raton, obviously I've flown out here. Uh, so this is it. I have one case with my ammo. This is my, uh, personal bag, but it also has my front rest, my rifle case and, uh, my front mat in there. This is my carry-on. My carry-on has most of my range bag stuff in it. And then I've got my rifle case. So I'm going to open up each one for you. And then uh, if we get lucky, my uh, shooting partner, David, uh, might let me show how he does his. Because, you know, we all do things a little differently when we travel. And uh, different things are important to different people. But uh, let me crack open some of this stuff and I'll show you what it's all about. Well, let me show you, you know, kind of my personal bag. So obviously I've got clothes and, you know, that's what you would expect. I've got shooting shirts and stuff like that. But in terms of packing it, you know, you got to keep in mind there's weight limits, there's size limits, there's all kinds of fun. So not only do I put all of my clothes in here, but there's my Seb. So this is a Seb Mini for travel. So this entire thing was in there and if I open this up for you you can see everything so there's that was in the bottom of my carry-on and then I have my roll-up uh, Everless stock uh, front mat and then in the bottom here oh and we need electronics so I had to bring a 50 foot HDMI cable but on top of that then I have my this is just my portable range bag, which is just a Makita pop-up or Ryobi pop-up uh, tool bag. So that'll just shuttle my stuff. And then, you know, of course I've got, let's see, where is it? Over here. So this is my rifle case that I brought. So this is an actual rifle case that is all bundled up. Let me see here if I can undo it with one hand here. give you an idea of what I'm traveling with here. So, I mean, that is a full 52 inch rifle case rolled up and fit inside. And then of course, you know, I got my, my shoes. I bring a portable cooler. So this is just a fold up igloo cooler, you know, 15 bucks or whatever. Works great for traveling and does what I need. And if I break it or lose it or whatever, it's not the end of the world. Uh, so that's what's in that bag. All right, guys, so here is my ammo box, and this is, uh, you know, a, a hard hard case style. It's got TSA locks on it because TSA locks are required for your ammunition. Everything but the gun gets TSA locks, and this is how I transport 480 or 500 because I have one empty box in here, but this will hold 500 rounds of ammo. These are my click it clams, so... There's 20 rounds in here. It is fully padded all the way around, and that is how I do my ammo. Now let's take a look at my buddy David. So he uses a slightly larger uh, Pelican case, which I may actually transition to. This one is about the smallest that you can get that still has a handle and wheels, and I, I like that idea. Uh, it does get a little tiresome carrying uh, 41 pounds of ammo around. Uh, what he does is he squeaks in his ammo. So it's a little looser, but he still never has a problem. Everything gets loaded long, just like mine. So um, anytime we go to a match where we're traveling, everything gets loaded long, and then we seat it at the match. So you can see lots of ammo down in there. He's got his calipers, his torque wrench, his tool kit, more ammo. And then he travels with his rear rest and his donut down in the bottom there and then we also have an arbor press uh, that's been taken apart so there's the post for the arbor press he's got his inline die uh, the rest of the arbor press is wrapped up in this towel for protection which is similar to what you'll see in mine uh, you know we bounce ideas off each other and uh, 
you know, every once in a while I'll do something he likes. Once in a while he does, well, he probably does more stuff that I like. But, uh, you know, we bounce stuff off each other, and, and it just helps us when we travel. Uh, but the key to traveling with guns and ammo like this is you really have to be honest with yourself about what you use um, at a match and really be able to scale back because, you know, this stuff gets expensive to ship, gets expensive to put on a plane no matter how you get it there. Um, you just got to be honest about what you really need. So we've gotten really good over the years at just bringing the bare minimums. Let's take a look at how we have the guns packed. Well, my buddy's going to let us look at how he transports his rifle. Uh, now, he uses Kaizen foam, which I have in one of my rifle cases, but I had to make some changes that you'll see when I show you my rifle case in a minute. Um, this is the foam of choice. It is more expensive, but it is a multi-layered foam that allows you to sectionally cut out. See how he's got like this really nice uh, cutout? So you, you trim it, and then you actually pull out layers to make whatever it is that you need uh, fit. And so he's got this all laid out for his gun. He's got his scoped action and, and uh, sunshade. He's got his uh, spotting scope stand. He's got his stock, obviously. He's got his cleaning rod. He's got his knife. Uh, so, you know, again, very well laid out. And the thing that is really great about this Kaizen foam is that it is a very high density foam. So it's not going to go moving around on you a lot. It provides a lot of great protection. Unfortunately, you're going to see like the worst foam possible in my case in a second. Um, I was in a hurry and had to make some changes and was not able to get a new piece of uh, Kaizen foam for this particular case. So um, it wasn't ideal, but it did end up working. So let's go take a look at what's in my rifle case. All right, let's take a look inside my rifle case. So uh, one thing to keep in mind is, at least as of today, uh, rifles get locked with a non-TSA lock. That is one of the few things that... Um, you know, has stayed true right now. So I've got these really, um, these are like grade five master locks, uh, virtually impossible to pick by the average person, uh, extra hardened shank. You can use whatever. I mean, my buddy uses standard, uh, um, standard locks. The point is you just don't want them to be TSA locks. So I've got one shackle on this side, one on that side. You need to have as many locks as it takes for this case to not be able to get a hand inside of it. So if I have one lock here and I unlock it, I might be able to pry that side open to get stuff out. They don't want that. So uh, you need to make sure you're using all the lock holes on it. And here's what I've got inside mine. So simple stuff. I've got my action barrel with a scope on it. I do cut out room in the padding for the sunshade. I have my stock. I have one bolt in here and one trigger in here. And then I have my primary trigger here and my primary bolt right here. I have one cleaning rod plus I have my uh, chamber cleaning rod. So those are in here. I have my squeeze bulb for dusting off. This is my tripod for my spotting scope. I have an arbor press in here. Now, normally I wouldn't travel with two different presses, but I'm letting a, body, a buddy of mine borrow uh, this arbor press. So I've got all the pieces to this arbor press that are gonna get, get put together here. I've got my rear bag, uh, my disassembly tool for the bolt. And then over here, I've got this case and it just fits down inside this and it, actually has even more in there. So I, um, I have my bore guide, I have my arbor die, I have a hand press with an inline die, and then I've got my uh, accuracy one bullet comparator, plus I have my Hornady bullet comparator, which will be replaced by my short action customs as, short, as soon as it shows up. But when I go to matches, I like to bring both comparators because you never know uh, what's gonna happen. And, and that is everything. Oh, and because we're expecting rain underneath my foam in here. So underneath the foam is my big, so this is my big rain shield that I put ammo in, uh, and keep the rain off of my ammo. So this will pop up. You've seen this in my rain video that I do. And so that gets transported under the foam of my case. So, uh, let's take a look at what is in my carry on now. This is my carry-on. Uh, this happens to be a 511 backpack. You know, whatever you pick is great. I, I love 511 products. I think they're really well thought out and well made, but whatever floats your boat. Um, 
I have an extra bag here that holds my earmuffs. When I travel this, actually, it's on Molly straps. It just comes off and travels inside the bag because otherwise it won't fit in carry-on. But let me just give you an idea here. You know, I've got things in this pocket, like I've got my fix-it sticks here. I've got my chargers. You know, this is going to be your normal stuff, you know, some whatever, you know, medicine you brought with you. I've got my punch kit, some of that. So we've got all of that going on. And then I keep a second key. So I have a key in my in my wallet for my gun case. And then this is a secondary key just in case. And there's a lot of, a lot of zippers in here. There's also, this is designed, I'll show you real quick. So this is designed for carrying a gun. So there's a Velcro pouch and I use it to put, uh, this is my scoring clipboard. And then I have my barrel cooler and extra batteries. So that goes in there. There's two little pouches up top. This has uh, just my travel, like uh, plugs and earphones and stuff like that. And then if we look on the main part, so I've got everything from my shooting hat. I've got, this is my travel cleaning kit and I'll show you that in just a second. I've got my eyes and ears and I keep them in this tube. Same thing, I keep them in my range bag, but it just makes it easy. I've got my spotting scope. This is my rain kit. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily always bring this, but anytime I travel somewhere, especially far from home and, and, I, and I have any chance of rain, it comes with me. I've got my rain scoreboard. So we are definitely expecting rain over the next few days. So I brought a few known rain things. So this is for scoring in the rain. And then I have my uh, front arm bag for when I use my joystick. I've got my donut tucked away in there. And then what else do I have? I've got my iPad for uh, scoring on electronic targets, which we'll be doing. And then I have a rain cover for my gun and front rest. And then I have a hard pad. So I take this with me because it's light, but there are some ranges uh, where you just wish you had a little bit more under the back of your rest. And this thing can be a lifesaver. So that's everything out of there. And then this happens to have a, a zip up section right here for my computer. So that comes with me there. Uh, so this thing really carries a lot of gear and, uh, you know, lets me bring everything I need. So, uh, all right. Well, I think that just about wraps it up. You've seen my gun and how it, it comes traveled. Uh, you've seen my buddy's gun and how he travels with it, our ammo, our gear. You know, we both do it differently, but uh, if I can emphasize one thing, it's reduce what you bring to the bare minimums that you need. Um, be honest with yourself about, you know, what you really need. Don't be a Boy Scout every time. You don't have to be prepared for every single scenario when you travel. So uh, anyway, appreciate you guys coming along with me and uh, have a good one.